Hey there, everybody. Kendall here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Number one, I don't have a lot of time to chit chat because I'm actually supposed to be over at Addison's house. We've got free spirit talks that will be coming on a little bit late because of my tardiness uh, today, which is kind of normal because I'm typically a tardy person. That's just the way it is. I, they say that the happiest people are tardy people. I don't know. It causes a little bit of stress. I have good times. I have bad times. Um, definitely try and catch free spirit talks uh, in the very, very near future, the next few moments and all coming up to you there. Um, the thing that I really wanted to, that's pressing on my, making sure that I'm coming up live because I don't see anybody popping on. I'm like, what the heck? I've got like only 15,000 screens going. Okay, I'm on, I'm on. Okay, so hey, Addison, I was just telling everybody that I'm t I'm tardy to your house. That's why Free Spirit Talks is going late. But to come over to Free Spirit Talks really, really soon and catch our topic over there um, that we'll be discussing today, though, really quick, I wanted to kind of, you know, like my morning has been a morning of just, you know, I got up, I went out to family breakfast with my kids. It was peaceful and everything. And I felt this pulsing rush of, of, of blowing up stuff <laughs> to put this to, for the sake of anything and it's like there's this energy even with inside myself because I was referring to this a few days ago of like having this energy of just like kind of feeling like I needed to go blow some shit up I need to go blow up my world a little bit I needed to cause some chaos in my life and why do we feel this need to cause chaos right and like why why do we create this chaos and we can say, well, because so-and-so did this, because he said that, because she did that, blah, 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 because this is going on, because that's going on. Is that true? Is that true that we feel the need to create and emerge ourselves into this chaotic energy of blowing our world up, of blowing shit up in different ways, relationships and jobs and things that we, like, maybe we just all of a sudden decide to go and completely clear a house out, you know, all this kind of stuff. We have mini little blow ups and we have massive blow ups where we just like, bam, and we can't get off the blow up wagon. That's the thing about it. This morning I've been working with a couple that's not even a client of mine yet. They're a beautiful, beautiful couple, but they have just been going through it. And I'm seeing this over and over again. As I sit here and I was just trying to get some stuff out, I had three different groups people message me all about the world blowing up today. Now one person's like, send me some love and light. Oh my God, I need it. This is what's going on. My world is in crisis. Another person just messaged me going, my, I'm falling apart again. My world is in crisis. And I'm having this like behind husband and wife messaging going back and forth. And I'm, I'm like, ah, like that. And they're having this nasty fight. And I'm telling him, pause, pause. Let's apply this. Let's ask ourselves, are we coming from this from a place of love? Are we coming from this from a place of hatred of a need to control, a need to try to get you to go into a forced position that I want you to have. I want you to move over here. So I'm going to try to force this. What are we trying to do with the chaos? What is the, the true idea that we have? Like what is our objection in creating the chaos and burning down our village? Like, why are we trying to do this? Because all of these people that I've been dealing with, and I would even speak for myself here on this, that, you know, when I say I have this feeling of like, just let me just burn down my forest in this moment. Let me clear some path. Let me get some, let me get some, you know, just some clearing. I need some purification to the situation, which is what we ultimately are trying to do. We're trying to purify the situation. But if you had told me, well, that's really going to be a lot of pain. Why are you trying to be hurtful? Why are you trying to mean? Why are you trying to, you know, rule, control, do all this kind of stuff in this situation? I'd be like, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying. I'm just trying to get my point across. I'm just trying to be seen. I'm just trying to be heard. I'm just trying to get my boundaries set, get my boundaries heard. I'm trying, I need to express all of this that I've been holding inside for all this time because I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. And that is the problem. We're not happy. And when we're not happy, we allow ourselves to hold this unhappiness until it cracks us wide open. And the unhappiness is birthed from the fact that we haven't been speaking our truth for God knows how long. Some of us, I mean, some of us are a little bit weaker and we hardly speak our truth, you know, for this week or two and all of a sudden we're just like, ah, and then others can hold that lack of truth with themselves and letting themselves be revealed for years, for years. I mean, I see a lot of couples in my practice and I mean, like I do a lot of, 
of work with couples and their work typically is based on the fact that one or both parties have been holding this this inconsistency within themselves speaking their truth for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. 30 years and sure it comes out in little little spots, you know, these little fights, these little statements, these little daggers that we throw at each other. But it doesn't ever really surface until one person just cracks wide open and tries to burn down the village and does something irrational or does something really just what was perceived as hurtful or unsensitive, you know, that's just not not good for the relationship. And the other party, of course, then goes, well, you don't love me, you don't this, da, 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 and finger pointing and blame and all of this nastiness forms. And it's all because we're not happy. And that's why we create the chaos. We create the chaos to create to purify ourselves so that we start speaking our truths so needs and all the things that are not needed and we don't even care what we take out in the matter you know it's like it's okay there went the red cross and the orphanage and all that it's okay i can rebuild it it's fine i'll rebuild it but right now i need to just clear the slate because I am so bogged down by this pain. I am so bogged down by the pain from the not being in alignment to who I am that I'm now broken. I'm now broken. I'm not just broken. I'm shattered. And when we shatter, we burn things down. We blow things up. And that is a shattering process. It sounds horrible, doesn't it? It sounds absolutely horrible. It's miserable. It's painful for all parties involved. It feels like there's nothing good that can ever come of blowing up a bunch of stuff. And I can tell you that I'm like a master blower up. You could say, you know, I'm born in the year of the fire dragon. I tend to really seriously like to like, I got a little pyro in me sometimes. And I burnt my wedding dress and my wedding ring in the past. And it felt fucking phenomenal to do that. It absolutely felt fucking phenomenal to throw in the midst of an argument into the outside burn pit and to throw my wedding ring in right behind it and to just make this point. But it was that purification process. Now, what good can come from that? Number one, I don't recommend this as a habit. I don't recommend to blow things up. The me of today is completely different than the me of my 20s or 30s, where I was a little bit more likely to blow shit up. The me of today wants to go, whoa, I feel that urge to blow stuff up. I need to pause. I need to pause right now and I need to breathe in this moment. I need to ask myself. I need to do the inquiry with self because this is not necessarily coming from the outside. This is stuff that I'm manifesting for myself. This is my feelings, my emotions, my thoughts, my lack of integrity with myself. So I'm not speaking my truth. I'm not speaking the things that I need speaking. So how can I be heard? How can I be felt if I'm not telling my truth? Right? And if I continue to just pause on my truth and my truth speaking, then what happens? Well, the pressure builds, the pressure builds, the pressure builds until all my truth turns from what could be positive communication, which could be very helpful and transformative and a good way communication to transformative and a negative when I blow up, right? When I blow up. And this is what we do in relationship of all sorts. We wait until the very last possible moment when we feel our vessel is cracking, when it is getting ready to shatter, and then we just spew it all out. But instead of it coming out with the possibility of being in love, it comes out as though it's daggers. It's daggers and it's dangerous. But no matter what way it comes out, it's going to come out, okay? So here's reality check. Our needs, our desires, our boundaries will always surface. They will always come out. Truth will always prevail, right? Truth will always be let, let itself be known. And this is what it means. Like you can say, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I Oh, you don't know. That's great. That's great. And we can in that moment mean it. But if we really don't mean it at a deep down earthy soul level at our core, that's Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It builds on itself. And that is that lack of integrity with, with ourselves. So it's us doing it to ourselves, right? We're doing it. We're doing it to us. And as we move forward, that builds and builds and builds. 
purification must happen. It must happen. So the blowing up, we can control it. We can have a controlled fire or we can have an uncontrolled blow up, right? So as we know from like a clearing of a forest, forest fighters will go out and they will set a controlled fire to burn down the brush that is not needed, that is a hazard that it can potentially help create an uncontrolled fire, right? I mean, we don't burn down our own brush. We don't control that stuff. We just let the brush just pack in, right? And then we throw out matches and we're like, oh yeah, no, it, nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen. Yeah, I'm gonna make that little remark. I'm gonna go do that. I'm going to think that I'm going to state that and we're throwing out these matches into this brush that has been building for years and years and years and years and years. We have all this dry grass inside of ourselves. It must be cleared and it will clear whether it is us getting to that point of breaking or us going, okay, I'm going to pause and I feel this tension inside my being. I feel this lack of of yes to myself and I feel the frustration, the irritation, the pain, the suffering that I'm bringing into myself from not speaking my truth. So I'm going to think about this for a moment and I'm going to go, okay, what is it that I really need? I'm going to get right with what it is that I need. And then I'm going to speak calmly, speak calmly. I'm not going to say you, you always do this to me. You always do that to me. It's your fault because it's not that person's fault. It's not that situation. We've done it to ourselves. Ownership of understanding that we've done it to ourselves and that we are the creators of everything that we have going on in our external world, that's where we gain our power, okay? If we're constantly going outward like this, we're a victim to life. We are not in control of our life. So that's why we blow shit up, right? Because we feel out of control. So then we blow it up and we're like, well, I'm going to control it. I'm going to blow it up. If somebody's going to burn this village down, I'm going to be the one to burn my own damn village down. I will burn it down. I will burn it down because we're trying to get that control back. When all we ever had to do was just pause and ask ourselves, what do I need? What do I want? Why am I not feeling heard? Have I actually expressed this job, this space in my life? Maybe it's not in alignment with me anymore. And you know what? That's okay, right? That's okay if it's not in alignment to us anymore. Okay, interestingly, but I see. Oh, there we go. Okay. It looks like my internet's coming in and out. How weird. I'm kind of like watching myself and watching myself all at the same time. So we pause and if we really do that inquiry with ourselves and we say to ourselves, what is it that I need? How am I not letting myself be heard? What am I not doing that could be positive communication and express is, and we ask ourselves, is this in alignment with me anymore? You know, am I really still in love with it or am I just trying to make this work because I'm comfortable here because it just always has been. So I'm just comfortable here. You know, if it's not making you happy and you're just there for the comfort of and the safety of it's always been, then you need to do some check-in work with yourself. You're never going to become happy with something if you're just there because it's just been there, okay? It's, it's like, you know, if you had a pair of pants when you were 15 and they were your favorite jeans, okay? We're we're going to pick on jeans because both guys and girls have jeans. So it's your favorite pair of jeans and you got them when you were 15 and you just love them. So you kept them and now you're 45 and you still have that favorite pair of jeans and they sit in your closet and you go in there and you're like, oh, these are my favorite jeans still. I love these jeans. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But you're keeping them. Why? Because of the memory? Because you've always had them and at this point you're like, well, I've had them for the last 30 years. so a piece of me. It's a piece of me. I can't get rid of them. No. But if you put them on, yeah, they just don't quite feel right anymore. It's not you. That was 15 year old you. It's not 45 year old you. It's not quite right. You still like them, but it's not really in alignment to you. You've changed so much, right? So do you just keep the pants and do you keep revisiting and walking into your closet every day and holding up those jeans and trying to get yourself to go, oh no, I'm going to wear these jeans today. Yep, no, I'm going to wear these jeans today. I'm going to wear these jeans today. 
Oh, man, back then I was this size, and now today I picked up, you know, I'm a little extra weight here. I've got a little love handle here. I wish they looked as good on me as they used to. And then you start to beat yourself up, so it starts to make you feel bad about yourself because now you're focusing in on a version of you that is of the past, something of you that is on the, of the past, and now it's just like, well, I wish that I was that. I wish that this was that. I would da 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 but we do this in our relationship. We look at our relationships with money, with people, with our lovers, with you know our work, with all that, with our health, with everything. Because everything is relationship, and we look at it from this perspective of when it was good and how it's not good now. And now I I wish that it was that way, so I'm going to stick with it right here, and I'm going to. About it not being the way it was. I mean, mad about it that it's not the way it should be in my mind. I want, I want it to be that way. It used to be that way. So now you just need to, jeans, you just need to change. You need to change jeans. You need to adapt yourself to, to help me feel better about me today. That's what, yeah, no, no. Those jeans aren't in alignment anymore, right? Jeans aren't in alignment anymore. That's an old version of you. That's an old energy level of you. Your old frequency. Some things like those with when they are no longer in alignment, when they longer longer fit our lives and fit who we are. Other things, we can say, what are the changes that I need to make? How can I speak my truth? How can I show up differently so that I can so I can make this healthy again. Before, can I have a controlled fire? A fire where I'm speaking my truth, where yes, it might feel heated. Yes, it might be boundary pushing. Yes, it might be very revealing. But I can have this transformation without burning down my village and the 10 villages around it. We can have that. But it requires us to do the work of the noticing that we need to pause. And it is the pause that allows us the space to actually lean in and go, oh, oh, I'm responsible for this. I'm responsible for coming to me. I'm responsible for my truth not being spoken. I'm responsible for not being seen, for not being heard, for not being felt. Because I keep answering this way. I keep showing up this way. Recognize your responsibility to where you're at in your life. Recognize how your unhappiness is yours and you were the creator of it. You can play victim all damn day long and you can say, yeah, well, Kendall, if that hadn't happened and if that person hadn't done that and if that hadn't happened with my work and if I had more money in the bank and if I felt better with my body and blah, blah, blah. That's all victim stuff. All victim stuff. You can say that and you can continue on the path that you are on, not making any changes and continuing to be unhappy. And you can change and you can blow up your world. But the reality is, after that blow up, because you don't really fully understand who sowed the seeds of the forest that you just blew up, you're the seed sower, right? And if you don't understand that you sowed those seeds, that you were the creator of that forest, so you blow it up and you replant a new forest with the same ideas, the same structures that you planted the first one in, you're going to reap the same results. Own your responsibility in your own unhappiness. Own your responsibility in your blow up. Own your responsibility in speaking your truth. I ask you today, and then I'm gonna let you go because then I'm running over to Addison's house to do free spirit talks. So I said, I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm going to ask you today to, to really look within yourself and ask yourself where you're unhappy. Why am I unhappy? Where am I unhappy? This is your journal prompts for today. Why am I unhappy? Where am I unhappy? And how is it continuously serving me in my present moment? What are the things that I need to do to take responsibility for my life and what is manifesting in it. How can I better speak my truth? I want you to ask yourself those. How can I better speak my truth?
talks this later you will see free spirit talks coming so if you're on here roll your butts over to free spirit talks wait for us there we're going to have a fantastic conversation um it's always playful when addison and i get together i almost called her addy she punched me as soon as i walked through the door oops i said it anyway please don't punch me she gets violent sometimes like when i say addy addy bell yeah ooh, she's gonna flip me off for that one no but um events that are happening addison has an aphrodite circle coming up ladies this is a free circle okay this is a free circle i'm so excited about this i have actually wanted to do a goddess circle for my local women in the area for years and I've never gotten around to it. I've been a lazy ass about creating a goddess circle. And then Addison, she just picked up the ball and she ran. And I'm so proud of her for it because she has created this amazing goddess circle, which I will be um, sitting in on tomorrow night. I'm very, very excited to do that. But I want to encourage all my followers that are local to the Dallas-Fort Worth area um, and anybody who can make it to come to this free event, to come to this beautiful divine event where we get to tap in to our goddess energy. We're going to be talking about about play, about passion. It's going to be embodiment. It's going to be upbeat, but at the same time, we're going to also be talking about, you know, some of the shit, like why we want to blow up our forests and stuff and how we cannot blow up the forest. Like how can we have that contained fire? I don't know what her topic is for tomorrow because it's not my circle, but I want to put it out there for her because I am in such beautiful support of this that I can, I'm just very, very excited for her to get this going. Um, my events, I have the, um, um, oh my goodness, what is it called? Is becoming em empowering bitch. That's what I have. It's empowering bitch. It's a body mapping class. Next weekend, we I will be doing a body mapping class, which is kind of art therapy based. We're going to be talking about the different aspects of the feminine. So this is open to women only. Sorry, as you can see, it is a woman's week around here this week. So we have an embody um the body mapping class and we're going to be going through our inner child we're going to be going through our motherly aspects we're going to be going through the seductress the siren and we're going to be going through the wise old woman if you are a woman in the dallas fort worth area this is a beautiful beautiful workshop women only small group limited number of women and this is going to be such a powerful and body practice that we are going to be going through with the beautiful art practice blended with it so that we can really take what is up in here in here all of this stuff from the critical mass of what us women get and move this into this picture of art using our bodies so we're going to be talking about like our minds and our hearts and our eyes and whoever this is who's trying to call me right now <laughs> we're not going to be talking about that and all this stuff, stuff we're going to be taking our physical emotional mental and spiritual bodies and we're going to be depicting them in an art format around empowering bitch which is what we're definitely designing here right how to get empowered and why do I use the word bitch? Because some people go, oh, that's so rough. Why are you saying bitch? Number one, I love to cuss. Number two, it's proven that people with a higher intellect actually cuss a lot more. Um, number three, the word bitch really does cover the feminine very well. You know, I have it in my, the song in mind, you know, bitch, right? I'm a, I'm a lover, right? I can be, I can be a lover. I can be a bitch. I can be I can be an angel. I can be, you know, a sinner. I have all of this different stuff. I'm a child. I'm a mother. I'm all of it. And that's what us women are. And it's more about embodying and empowering all aspects of the feminine. So there you have it. There you have it. I love you guys. I will catch you tomorrow with another conscious coffee. Remember, stop existing, start living, step into your truth and allow yourself to speak it before you burn down your village. I love you guys. I will catch you tomorrow with another conscious coffee.